Was Joan of Arc a fraud? Uh, well, there's currently a play running in London, I, Joan, which depicts Joan as non-binary. That is, uh, neither man nor woman. This is perhaps understandably enraged uh, a lot of women who see her as a feminist icon. Their model, therefore, has been kind of dashed by this play. The point, though, is that Joan of Arc is suddenly in the news. Well, let's quickly review the principal features of her life before we get to the business of uh, fraud. Uh, Joan was a young woman, a literate young woman, born in the Lorraine section of France. She believed she was instructed by two saints and an archangel to intervene in the war against the English and in particular to help to raise the siege of Orleans. Orleans. That went quite well. But in her subsequent military career, there were several failures. Joan was sold by a French trader to the English who wanted her killed and relied upon the Archbishop of Beauvais to declare her worth killing because she was disguised as a man, which apparently contravened some church rule. Uh, the king who had supported her was now on the throne and looked the other way when the question of ransom came up. Understandably, perhaps, because a ransom in those days was enormous, a, a king's ransom. <laughs> and so she was then sent for trial and burned at the stake, end of Joan. Uh, the faithful, for the most part, will say it's all true. It shows that she had divine help, which saved the day militarily, and others would say it's all nonsense and none or little of this ever happened. Uh, then there are some people whose position is kind of halfway in between. Some of it's true, some of it isn't. Okay, let's start out with those who would say, uh, yes, uh, she was a fraud. You really shouldn't uh, believe much or all of it. <laughs> okay, uh, so what are the arguments? Uh, most notably, there is the extraordinary narrative about being visited by an archangel and two support angels. Uh, do angels even exist? Unlikely. Uh, for most, this is a primitive and fanciful idea, one that happens in novels and fairy stories, but, but not in real life. Uh, next, there is apparently some question about whether Joan's appearance on the battlefield produced the military results of the Siege of Orleans. Although lauded as a warrior, she didn't actually fight. Uh, she would not know how. She was really more of a kind of mascot for the troops. So a bit of exaggeration there. Uh, the Holy See, the Vatican, uh, proceeded to beatify Joan when her ashes were allegedly found in the shop of an apothecary. But uh, subsequent analysis proved them to be those of an Egyptian mummy and a cat of the same era. Uh, nonetheless, the Vatican proceeded to canonize her, so she's St. Joan. All in all, uh, there's been plenty of questionable information, fanciful history, and possibly even some fraud. Well, now of course there are many who disagree, who say, no, no, not fraud, it is all absolutely true. So, uh, those who would say she was not a fraud aver that uh, John really, Joan really was there. She got instructions from angels, performed miracles, inspired the nation. The case is clearly and comprehensively stated in an article about Joan in the Catholic Encyclopedia. It states who she was, where she was from, the subsequent events in her life, where and how she managed to become the heroic and ultimately saintly figure that we remember. Her sainthood was well-deserved. Uh, next, Joan clearly has an important and strong role in the history and culture and mythology of the French nation. Uh, French politicians invariably uh, refer to her when running for office. They refer to Joan, to the spirit of Joan, and so forth. Politicians uh, don't want to appear foolish, and they have some dignity maintained, so there must be something in it. And many scholarly works of history and examination of the past are quite clear that Joan was the uh, real historic figure that, that we have learned to believe and did what has been described. There's no doubt about the military events in which she was involved. So that's the case uh, for those who are quite convinced that uh, she was not a fraud. <laughs> well, 
Well, what's my take? Well, look, in, in a story like Joan of Arc, we must simply make, make our best guess because historical writing perhaps cannot be incredibly relied upon. There's a lot of bias in it. Uh, my guess is that she was an illiterate peasant girl who had hallucinations, possibly from schizophrenia, and accordingly was promoted by the church and dramatically sent into battle. Uh, the use of her apparent relics to bolster her sainthood candidacy, uh, well, that's up to the Vatican, but the strength of the evidence behind their uh, initiative uh, seems to have been pretty faulty. Uh, a shortcoming which is of limited long-standing importance to most people. So in some, some of it's true, some of it isn't. That's how I come out. <laughs> Hope you liked it, uh, and uh, please subscribe and take a look at some other similar